is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Have you ever been in a hopeless situation? I'm sure you have. But this was hopeless, hopeless. My guest had a son, seven years old, the worst kind of autism, can't read, can't write, can't spell. And all of a sudden, he starts communicating with the most profound thoughts coming from heaven. In fact, it then gets better. Then he begins prophesying and changing people's lives. My guest said no one's in a hopeless situation. My guest says she knows how to grab hold of a supernatural rope of hope. <laughs> My guest, Tony, you're a pastor, one of, one of many pastors at a mega church. Your life is going good. You have a nice marriage. Uh, you have a beautiful baby boy. And then a bombshell hit you. What was it? Well, yeah, everything had been going wonderful. We had our little jo Joy, Josiah, and uh, we named him that because it meant fire of the Lord. Hmm. And we were excited to start our family. And, uh, you know, we bought our house. Uh, we wanted to have 2.3 kids with a dog and a picket fence, you know, the American dream. Yeah, you've been watching TV. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but Josiah was hitting all of his medical milestones. Everything was going really well until about 22 months old. All of a sudden, very quickly, things began to shift. And over about a three, three week period of time, mm. he Josiah. stopped looking at us. Josiah. He stopped responding at me, to his name. Josiah. Suddenly, play Josiah. skills that he had, uh, he started Josiah. losing them. And the 40 words or so that he had began to just go away. Words mm. like mama and dada. He was flipping lights on and off incessantly. And so uh, we mobilized and we tried to figure out what was going on. After four months or so of testing, we finally found ourselves sitting in a boardroom with doctors around the table. And they Just said, uh, it's autism spectrum disorder. And I remember opening the folder and the words leapt out at me, no known cause, no known cure, lifelong. We were going into something that was a hopeless situation as far as that goes. And that's really what I struggled with. God, where is hope when there is no hope? And then it got worse. At age five, he got a lifetime sentence. Explain that. We mobilized. We had done everything we possibly could uh, in the natural. You know, we we absolutely got him into the best therapies. We did all sorts of uh, alternative therapies with him. I even sat with him in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber for 14 dives, they're called. We did everything we really could. But then at five years old, we did get that addendum that we just hoped we would never get, that he was nonverbal, low functioning, and severe. And so, Sid, what Josiah that meant was that he would be one of 40% of children with autism that they say would never speak. How, how did you, as a mother, cope with this? Well, that's just it. You're really told to learn how to cope with it. And I really struggled with that coping thought. In fact, I, I asked God, how am I supposed to cope with this? I wrote down 10 questions for God.
because I said, you know, if I'm going into this, I need to know biblically what I'm supposed to do, how I'm supposed to pray, how I'm supposed to manage this life. Everything, just all your best resources burn up very quickly. Uh, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, financially, you just burn out very quickly. And when God says, I have good plans for you, I have good plans for your son, plans for hope in a future. I had to be really serious and ask God, D is that for us? Do you mean that for me? I had to look at the affections of my heart and was autism the voice that I was hearing loudest or was what Jesus did for us what I was hearing loudest? And then at one of your lowest moments, you're not one that would have experiences with God where God would show up. That wasn't you. That wasn't your paradigm. But he showed up one day. <laughs> Tell me about it. I felt like for the first time in my life, I really needed to feel him and couldn't. And I felt like when I prayed, I was just praying into the darkness or something. Well, um, things had been really difficult with Josiah and I had put him down for a nap and I decided I better try to catch a wink because you don't, ca you don't get a lot of sleep when you're a parent of a child with autism. And uh, I go to lay down. And all of a sudden, about 20 minutes later, I just wake up and I smell this most amazing smell. And I can't figure it out. I'm smelling my hair. I'm smelling the pillow. I'm <laughs> trying to sniff this out like a bloodhound. What is this smell? And it smelled like vanilla and cinnamon, like creme brulee almost. And I couldn't figure out where it could have been coming from. I go out, I go out into the hall, not there. I come back into the bedroom and I'm like, I'm just gonna lay down for a second. And I just drink it in. And I'm going, what is this? And I remembered my mom telling me about when my father had passed away. He died at 55. She was so low and that one day she smelled a fragrance and she told me it was the fragrance of the presence of the Lord. And I went and I looked it up on Google. I'm like vanilla, cinnamon, <laughs> fragrance of the Lord, you know. And here other people had experienced this, but Sid, what that did to me it showed me that even though I couldn't feel him, that Jesus came and superseded that by getting to my senses to say, I'm here. I am here. And there was just this peace that overcame me because of it. And then you found something called rapid prompting method. Did you ever teach him to spell? No. He started <laughs> spelling. How supernaturally he knew words. 